Welcome to the Coding Loft. My name is Samuel and today you will learn how to make a nav bar that shrinks as you scroll down and grows as you scroll up. This is a pretty common effect that you see quite often on websites and it's actually quite easy to do. So first you will learn how to do this using functional programming and afterwards we will look at how to solve this using object-oriented programming, which is more elegant and allows you to reuse your code in other settings as well. So right now we have our example website set up here and as you can see, as I scroll down, nothing happens. That's what we want to change now. Inside of our index.html file, we have this nav element with the ID navbar. That's what we want to select. And in the styles file, you can see that it has a height of 120 pixels. It is fixed. That's why it always stays on top. And these grayed out areas here, that's what we want to add with the JavaScript. So first we want to add a transition property to our navbar. So whenever the height changes, we have a smooth transition. And then we want to create an extra class for our navbar that adds a smaller height as we scroll down. So let's solve this using JavaScript. First, let's save our navbar selector in a variable and we call it navbar selector. And we could get the navbar by saying nav with the ID of navbar. Now we can reuse this navbar selector in our code. And then we have the navbar. So we say navbar equals document dot query selector. And then we use our navbar selector to select our navbar. Now in the next step, let's add this grayed out style right here into our script. Now let's create a constant that has the styles that we need to add. So we say const styles equals, and then we open with the template string. So we have a multi-line string and first we select the nav bar. And here we want to add the transition property. So we want to say whenever the height changes, it takes 0.5 seconds and we have an ease in out effect. And then to our navbar, we want to add a class called small, which basically means that we changed the height and originally we had 120 pixels and now we want 60 pixels. And here's the reason now why we use this navbar selector because we can now replace hashtag navbar, control D with this variable. So we say dollar sign and then we say navbar selector. And then we want to create a style tag, which we append to our head. So we say document.createElement and then we create a style element. Now right now the style tag is empty, so we want to say style.innerHTML equals whatever the styles is that we defined up here. And now all we need to do is we append it to our head, so document.head.append child, and then we append our style tag. Now let's make this even nicer by creating a small function which we call add styles. And add styles takes a selector, and then we copy our code here, indent this, and now we want to pass in this selector right here because in your case, you might have a different selector than I have. You also might want to apply this function to a different kind of element. So now we can simply say add styles. And then here we say, well, to our navbar selector. And now when we open our dev tools and we inspect the website, we can see that here in the head, we now have a style tag added that has these properties that we just added and this class of dot small with height of 60 pixels. Now all you need to do is we now need to add an event listener to the window. So we listen to scroll events and then we want to fire a callback function. And the window object has a property called window.scrollY. So let's console.log it for now so you see what's going on. Now as you scroll down, you can see the number of the scroll Y property and you can see that it's the amount of pixel from the top of the website to the current top of your viewport. So let's use this. And all we have to do is we say window.scroll Y. We want to listen to whenever it's bigger than 10 and we make an if condition, but we use a ternary operator. So we say if that's the case, then our navbar should get an added class of, and that's what we defined in our style tag and the class is called small. If that's not the case, so if window.scroll is not bigger than 10, meaning we have scrolled back or we started right there, then we want to remove our class of small. So the remove small. And as we scroll down, you can now see that uh, it gets smaller, but we don't have any transition. So there must be a typo somewhere. Ah, right here, 0.5 seconds. Let's save it and and now with a smooth transition, as we scroll down, it gets smaller. As we scroll up, it gets bigger. That's the functional way of doing it. Let's look at object-oriented programming. So basically we create a class, we call it shrinking element, or whatever you want to call it. And it has a constructor, 
where you take in any parameters and then it can do something. And then we want to create an instance of this shrinking element. Let's call it shrinking navbar equals and then a new shrinking element. Select this and let's comment out all our, our functional part from before. So we only have the object oriented section right now. What do we actually want? Well, we want to have a method that gets the element that we want. We want to have a method that adds the styles to the site. And then we want to have a method that initializes our code. And in our constructor, we want to initialize our code. So we call the init function, this dot init. Now for now, let's just console.log initializing. Let's see if that works. And yeah, you can see that we have created this instance of our shrinking element. We call it shrinking navbar. And every time this is created, the init function gets called and the init function prints console.log initializing. Great. So when we initialize the code, we actually want to call our get element function, this is get element and our this dot add styles function. How do we get the element? Well, we need some sort of selector. And that's what we now define in our constructor. So we take in a selector and then we say this dot selector equals whatever is the selector we pass in. Then we also need some element and we set this to null at the beginning. And then our get element function, all we want to do is we want to say this dot element equals document dot query selector and then we pass in our selector. And then down here, of course, we have to pass in our selector. So that was nav hashtag navbar. And we can also console.log whatever this element is right now. Head back here. And of course, we have to write this dot selector. And now we can see that we have the navbar selected right here. Now that's step one. And we also want to add the style. So we have a styles property, which is an empty string at the beginning. And when we add our styles, we want to say this dot styles equals, and then again, template literals. So we have a multi-line string. And then we basically add what we had before. So we say this dot selector, which is nav hashtag nav bar, has a transition property where when the height changes, we have 0.5 seconds and we have an ease in out effect. And then we want to add a specific class to our selector. So this dot selector, and then we add the class of small, and then we have a height of 60 pixels. And then we do the same that we did before. We create a style tag, which is document dot create element of style. And then we add to the style tag, the inner HTML is whatever this dot styles is at this point which is this text right here. Then we append it to our document head dot append child. That's the method that we need. We append our style tag and then we can also just console.log it for now. And you can see that now we have the style tag with the property of first child and in the HTML, which is basically the text that we inputted. So we have nav hashtag nav bar, it has the right selector right here. We are almost there. Now the last thing that we need is we need to add an event listener and that we do in our constructor function. So to do that, we need to take in the window object as well. So we pass it down here as window. And after we initialize our function, so after we call get element and add styles, we then want to add in event listener and we say window dot add event listener and we listen to a scroll event. And again, we fire a callback function. So we do the same that we did before. So we listen for the scroll Y property. And if window.scroll Y is bigger than 10, then using a ternary operator, we make an if statement. If w.scroll Y is bigger than 10, then we want to add to our element the class of small. If it's not the case, then we want to remove the class. And that should work. So let's see. Yeah, great. We scroll down, it gets smaller. We scroll up, it gets bigger. And we have this smooth transition. So there again, we have our functional programming approach and then our object oriented programming approach, which is more elegant and more reusable. I hope you did like this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos about JavaScript, React and frontend development in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.